So what is ham radio? Well, ham radio is when a pig and a radio really like each other and they... No, that's not ham radio. So what is ham radio or amateur radio? Ham radio invokes a wide range of visions. Maybe you have a mental image of a ham radio operator from the movies or television, movies like Frequency, or TV shows like Last Man Standing, or maybe visions of the old mad scientist like Herman Monster in the show The Monsters. Well, ham radio operators are actually quite varied, from the emergency communicator to the person that tinkers in a workshop, or just the casual chatter, or maybe an older lady that's chasing down DX. Everyone has a place in ham radio, and so do you. Ham radio operators use all kinds of radios and antennas with a wide variety of frequencies to communicate with other hams, either locally or around the world. They all use ham radio for personal enjoyment, to keep in touch with friends, family, or even emergency communications. Some of them even are experimenters, experimenting with all kinds of radios and antennas. They communicate using microphones, Morse code, computers, cameras, and even satellites. Ham radio operators meet in person or on the air. Ham radio clubs and organizations are devoted to every conceivable purpose. There are also special ham radio flea markets and conventions, large and small. The nice thing about ham radio is it doesn't have an age requirement. There are kids as young as four and adults well into their centennial. Some ham radio operators have technical background. Most of them do not. One thing that all ham radio operators have is the interest in radio itself. There are three basic facets of amateur radio. The technology, the operating, and the social networking. Your interest may vary. You may want to use ham radio for a specific purpose or you just might want to join the fun. All are perfectly valid reasons to get a ham radio license. So what can you expect to hear when you listen to the ham radio bands? You'll hear everything from simple conversations to on-the-air meetings and even contests. One of the most common things is rag chewing. It's just engaging in casual conversation or what's called chewing the rag. Rag chewing can take place either on the local repeater or a long-distance contact. The nice thing about rag chewing is you don't necessarily need to know a lot about the person you're talking to. Most ham radio operators are very friendly. You just make the contact and start talking. Then there's DXing. DX stands for distance. And the lure of making contacts as far from home as possible have always been part of ham radio. Hams compete to contact faraway stations and to log the contact from every country. They enjoy contacting islands and making personal friends from other countries. When conditions are right and the band is full of foreign accents, capturing the lure of DX is easy. Contests are a lot of fun. Think of it as ham radio's version of football. You try to make as many contacts as you possibly can, which translates to points. Sometimes you can even get thousands of points in a single contest. Contests are typically run on the weekend and involve sending short little messages back and forth to confirm the contact. These little contacts are related in some way to the contest itself. Contests range from local QSO parties, which typically involves a state or a region, to worldwide contests, such as CQ Worldwide. There's also de-expeditions, which involves a group of hams going to an obscure location to make contacts on a ham radio. Some of these de-expeditions, not only do they have to worry about getting the antennas and the radios there, but they also have to come with their own power. And let's not forget the special event stations, which can be everything from local fairs to the Wright Brothers' first flight and large air shows. And let's not forget the nets. There are swap nets, bulletin board nets, technical service nets, emergency service nets, and traffic nets. What is a net, you might ask? That's basically a group of hams that are getting together for a sole purpose. Although the United States has a large population of hams, currently 790,000, it is by no means representative of the majority. The amateur radio population in Europe is growing at a rate never seen before. And Japan has by by far the largest per capita amateur radio population. There is over 3 million hams worldwide, and very few countries don't have ham radio operators. So by now you're thinking, this is an interesting hobby, but I really don't want to put thousands of dollars into it either. If you look online, you'll see pictures of people's ham shacks or radio room. Most of the ham shacks you'll see are rather large in scale, typically with multiple radios, computers, microphones, Morse code keys, headphones, antennas, and all kinds of cable. But in your case, your ham shack could consist of a small little handheld radio radio, costing less than 50 bucks, or maybe a mobile radio with an antenna on the roof, and that can usually be done for 150 bucks. So it's not that expensive to get started. In the United States, amateur radio licensing is regulated by the Federal Communications Commission, but the tests are administered by what's called a volunteer examiner. Volunteer examiners are usually associated with a ham radio club. You can find a local club by going to the ARL website. Go to this page, punch in your zip code, and you're sure to find an amateur radio club near you. There are literally hundreds of clubs throughout the United States, and some 
Some cities have as much as three or four clubs. And here's a list of different websites you can go to to take practice exams. The first test is the technician class license. It gives you frequencies above 30 megahertz and a small portion of the HF band. There's also the general and the extra class exam for more advanced ham radio operators. To find out where a local exam is in your area, go back to the RO website, go to this page, punch in your zip code, and you'll find all the exam sessions in your area. And that's all there is to it. Good luck on your exam. And that's a brief overview of what ham radio is all about. And 7-3s from N9 LVS.